Hey, are you over 40 and considering going back to school to get your degree? Hello, I'm Dr. Denise Struthers, and I was exactly where you are nine years ago. And I know you may be feeling excited, fear, uncertainty, all at the same time. I went back to school at the age of 48 to get my bachelor's and I ended up getting a master's and a doctorate back to back. I'm sure you have some questions, uh, the same questions that I had, like, do I have what it takes since I'm not used to being in a classroom environment? Or maybe you are concerned about taking tests again, or maybe you feel that technology has advanced so much that you're not sure if you can keep up. Well, I'm happy to share with you everything you need to know and hopefully help you get on the right path should going back to school be the right decision for you. There are absolutely many reasons why you might decide to further your education. Perhaps you want to set an example for your children Maybe you want to stay competitive on your current job. A study by the Brookings Institution concluded that artificial intelligence will affect almost every occupation. Many adults who return to school are doing so to equip themselves with new skills that will help them prosper in this ever-changing employment scene. Maybe you are deciding to fulfill a long-held dream. Approximately one in three Americans over the age of 25 holds at least a bachelor's degree. That means two out of three do not. If you are someone who has longed to check a college degree off your bucket list, then going back to school makes sense. Or maybe you're seeking a second chapter. If you were to ask many people within your age group, if they could do it all over again, would they choose a different career? You will be surprised that many of them would say yes. Whatever the reasons are, here's how you can make it a reality. I'm going to base our discussion on this principle that comes from the Bible. This is a great principle that you can apply to any goals you may have, regardless to your religious background. And it comes from Luke 14, 28. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Isn't that a great principle? So to help prepare you to reach your goal, we are going to look at what it is going to cost you. And we're going to look at it at the end from the beginning. First, we're going to look at the financial cost. We're going to look at the personal time cost, the family time cost, and the emotional cost. So I'm pretty sure that I do not need to tell you that tuition in the United States is expensive. For the 2021-2022 school year, these are the average tuition costs for private, out-of-state, and in-state schools for a full-time student. These are average costs, so depending on the school, it could be higher or lower if you are a half-time student. So let's discuss the best way to approach uh, your financial cost. Okay, this is information that is hot off the press. 
Many of you know that we are still within a pandemic and coronavirus has had a massive impact on college admissions. And so because of stay-at-home orders, virtual learning, and cancel SAT and ACT exam dates, many universities are aware that it might be difficult or impossible for incoming students to take and do well on standardized tests in time for application deadlines. So their response uh, to this problem, many universities and colleges have stated that the suspension of requiring standardized test scores could either be temporary, some have declared that it's just temporary, some schools are using this as a trial period and will keep their test optional policy for three years before deciding whether to implement it permanently or not. And then other schools have announced that they've decided to become permanently test optional. However, most schools aren't committing to whether or not they'll continue their test optional policy after the pandemic ends. So if you're deciding to go back to school within this upcoming semester or within uh, 2022, you are going back at a great time because you do not have to worry about SAT scores or uh, the ACT exam. What we do know though, is that more and more schools are becoming test optional. Colleges are making an effort to attract more diverse applicants and they don't want potential students to be held back by circumstances beyond their control. Whether uh, that's test centers being shut down because of the coronavirus or students not being able to afford standardized tests, even in non-pandemic times. Additionally, research has shown that students from more affluent backgrounds consistently have higher SAT and ACT scores. So many schools are dropping the standardized test requirements so students from more disadvantaged backgrounds aren't put at a further disadvantage during the college admissions process. So already over 1,000 colleges and universities in the United States are test optional and others are test flexible. Whether you don't need to submit test scores if you have a certain GPA or meet another requirement. So we expect this number to only grow over time. Great news, if you want to go to any college or university today, most of them, about 80% of them, you do not have to worry about the SAT or the ACT exams. That includes all of the Ivy Leagues, that includes uh, the University of Berkeley, um, Boston University, Brown, and if you Google it, you will uh, be able to see a list of all of the schools. Howard University uh, has waived their um, uh, and for their admissions. You don't have to worry about having ACT or SAT scores to attend there. And that is such great news. Take advantage of every grant and scholarship that is available to you. Do your research. That is my uh, first uh, suggestion to you. Take advantage of every grant and scholarship that is available. You can learn more about grants and scholarships uh, through the finance office at the school you plan to attend, or you can check sites uh, like the College Investor. Uh, everything is just really a Google away. Pay particular attention to those targeted and non-traditional students. If you have credits from another institution, check to see how many of those credits can be transferred over. 
If you attended college before and taken out student loans, find out if your previous school offers any kind of debt forgiveness program. Usually how it works is they accomplish this by reducing past due balances by one third at the end of each semester until the debt is eliminated. Check with your employer to learn if they offer tuition assistance. Minimize your student debt by continuing to work while you are in college. If it takes you a few years longer to graduate, it beats being buried in student loans. Plus, there's so much that is going on through the pandemic. Many are submitting um, petitions to the president to eliminate the uh, student loan debt. So uh, it could be that by the time you graduate that all of the students in the United States no longer have to worry about student loans. That would be absolutely amazing. Uh, since I have just completed seven and a half years of school. But one of the things that I did do was that I checked with the school that I attended and uh, because I had gone there uh, when I was younger, I owed some money and they reduced the amount that I owed significantly uh, so that I could um, apply and um, attend again. So you never know, just ask, find out. And uh, I believe that they will do whatever it takes to help you. No matter which university you plan to attend down the road, see if you can complete some of your education at a nearby community college. You can gain credits towards your main degree at a fraction of the price. Absolutely. Also, check into adult degree programs. Uh, they are geared towards giving you life experience. Look into whether your university offers credit for prior learning. For example, if you've been working in IT for years, it's possible you can earn credit for that and skip courses you don't need. If you've worked in childcare, there may be a child development class or two you can skip. Not only do prior learning credits allow you to focus on the coursework you need, but you will also save money. And that was a very big help for me and the reason why I was able to complete my bachelor's in three years instead of four because they gave me uh, almost 30 credit hours from uh, my ministry experience and also from my work experience. So when I got ready uh, to also take my master's, when I applied for that, the same thing. Uh, they gave me uh, work experience and they gave me ministry experience as well. So there were about 18 credit hours, uh, six classes that I did not have to take when I was working on my master's. So I was able to finish that in two years. So it's just paperwork that you have to fill out. You may have to submit W-2 forms just to prove that you had that experience or something like that, which if you don't have it, you can get it. Uh, but you definitely want to find out if your school offers that or even look for a school that offers that kind of assistance uh, and it will cut the cost of your overall education. You will need to factor in the cost of books, which can be very expensive. One class can require that you purchase uh, four to five books just for that one class. I would recommend that you get the book on Amazon most times. It is cheaper on Amazon, plus you will get it right away, uh, especially if you have a Prime account. I would suggest 
that one way that you can cut cost on purchasing books is to get it on Kindle. If you do not have to have the physical book in your hand, get it on Kindle. Most times it is uh, cheaper in uh, a Kindle format or a PDF format. Also, I would suggest that uh, through Amazon, you can borrow the book for a semester. And uh, that is uh, a very low inexpensive cost. You can also Google to see if the book is already in a PDF format that's for free, especially for older books. Or you can check with other students uh, that have taken the class before you and see if they will be willing to sell the book. Uh, if your school has a library, then you can check to see if you can check the book out or if they have copies that you can uh, purchase as a used book. You may also need to get equipment uh, that is up to date. So if your laptop is older than five years, you may need to purchase a um, new uh, laptop. The good news is that uh, most colleges and universities will give you access to the Microsoft Suite for free, so you will not need to pay for that. You may need to purchase other applications along with a specific class uh, so that uh, the learning experience is um, better, especially if you are online. Uh, with a Hebrew class that I had, I had to uh, purchase additional software uh, to assist me in learning the material. So that is something uh, that may be required as well. So once you have your finances in order, you now need to plan your time. You'll need to build time for class and study into your current commitments, and you're probably already overloaded. So there may be some things that you're going to have to get rid of uh, just so that you can now add this to your schedule. And I suggest that you sit down and write out a daily schedule, then adjust it until you come up with something that you know is doable because you don't want to be unrealistic about <laughs> your new scheduled time. Allow your family and friends to support you. If a friend offers to pick up the kids uh, so you can stay late for a study group, say yes. If you need someone to quiz you, ask your family or friends. When you go back to school as an adult, it impacts everyone you care about. Allow them to fully appreciate what you're doing by taking part. If you're someone that is not as familiar with the uh, technology, with the applications, Microsoft Word, Excel, and you have young people in your house who just grew up learning these applications, just a part uh, of, of their training, always have their phones in their hand as a third appendage. I mean, you know, ask them for help and um, allow yourself the time to learn these new applications. I uh, think you're gonna be learning so much, so you want to factor in that uh, all of these changes that now need to occur, and uh, you want to include your family, prep your family, let them know, and that you know really communication is the key and just allowing others to help you. So this is a great segue in talking about the family time cost. Your family has to have buy-in to your goal so that you can complete your education successfully, especially if you have a spouse. So everyone in your household needs to be on board. You will need them to assist you, like I said, whenever needed and understand that you most likely will not be able to have the quality time with them that they deserve. 
it will be a new normal and adjustments that the entire family would need to make. Holidays and birthdays, anniversaries may require a different kind of celebration. The year, uh, for an example, that I turned 50, uh, my husband took me on the Mediterranean cruise. Uh, we flew from uh, the DMV to Barcelona. We got there the day before the cruise ship uh, was to ship out. But when we arrived, I couldn't really go out and enjoy Barcelona right away because I had a paper due that night. So I was in the room finishing up my paper while my husband went and saw all of Barcelona. He, he had a different experience with it than I did. I had to enjoy it through his pictures. But I made sure I got my paper in on time. Uh, and I had to even do that while we were on the ship. There, were, there was another paper that I had to do. And we're only talking about a week. Uh, and uh, once the assignment was given, you know, the, it was due and I didn't want to turn it in late. I probably could have talked to my professor to see um, if I could turn the paper in late, but I wanted to get it done uh, because that's only one week. When I got back, I still had many more papers uh, that were due. And plus, it was close to final, so I just didn't want uh, to put that kind of stress on myself but we still had fun. Uh, we went out to all of the excursions, but once I was back in my cabin, I would get as much study time in as I could. Uh, so it was a great celebration. May not have been the way that I that it would have been had I not been in school, but my husband and I, we still had a great time. And so I want to also say, be realistic. As soon as you're back in the education saddle, you will be juggling multiple responsibilities. Sometimes it will be hard and you'll wonder why you ever decided to take that leap. And so to avoid family stress, let your family know what your schedule is, maybe at the top of every week. You can post it on the fridge or you can text everyone. If you want your kids uh, to keep up with it, definitely text them. If you need for them to handle pertinent business, let them know in advance. Like life, there will be ups and downs. So knowing that in advance will help you expect and accept them. Uh, so communication is the key. So I think that the emotional time cost is very necessary to talk about, especially with everything else that's going on in the world. Um, a lot of people are in stress mode. A lot of them have lost loved ones. They've lost jobs. Um, they have uh, just are on edge as to what is going on uh, with the pandemic itself and we're all experiencing a new normal. So the emotional time cost uh, is very important that you are taking care of yourself. And let me be honest, there will be some stressful moments. Uh, studying for exams, taking tests, and writing papers can take a toll. I'm also doing um, a part two to this after 40 and going back to school, I'm doing over 40 and having to write academic papers. So you can look in the comments section for that, or it may be up at the top for you to also click on. And as you're writing papers, I'm just giving tips on some of the advanced features, but everything that you need to know about papers. But it can take its, its toll. It can be stressful. Uh, managing your classwork, managing your family, all of these things are important, but you must also manage and schedule times for you to take care of you. If you are someone that attends church or you're spiritual 
whoever your higher power is, make sure you keep them as your number one priority. Be able to have those times of, of meditation or talking uh, to your God and, uh, you know, allowing yourself to be uh, filled up. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. So uh, when I go into the presence of God, I'm there so that there could be an exchange, that I could cast all of my cares upon him and that he can fill me up again. That is so important to maintaining uh, an emotional healthy state, remaining strong, being able to manage everything that you're doing and that when you come through it, you're still healthy, you know, you're not having a nervous breakdown. I have seen it happen. So even though I'm laughing, this is really, it's, it's very serious. So you must be able to manage all these things, but at the same time, take care of yourself. Schedule in times where you don't do anything except rest. You know, send the kids out, send the spouse out, and just sit and do absolutely nothing. You know, just for a time. You may need several hours uh, for you to do that. Uh, one of the things uh, in completing a doctorate, you have to do a dissertation. So for about five or six months, I was working around the clock. I would go three and four, four days um, of just around the clock, you know, and um, having to take a day off then, uh, maybe a half a day and then get right back. So there were times when I had to take time to just rest my mind and to schedule in times to play, schedule in times to enjoy my family, um, continue to go to church because that's important to me. Um, I continue to go to church, but I had to make the decision. I can't participate in all of the activities, especially if there was something that fell on the day or night that I had classes, you know, so you can make these decisions and it's okay. You know, people can get the job done without you. That was probably the hardest thing, especially if you're a leader. You know, you're so used to doing things. You're so used to being active, but you will need to say, hey, let me delegate this. It will be okay. It will get done. It's okay if it's not done the way that I would do it as long as it gets done. So uh, if you are having that kind of position at your job or uh, at home or at church or, or in the community with whatever it is that you're doing, know how to delegate and make sure that you do that as often as you need. Don't overload yourself. You're only one person. And this is just for a season. You won't be in school forever. You know, the goal is to get started and to finish, you know, get it done. And so schedule in those times that will allow you to recharge and then get back to work. Um, another thing that I will say is avoid procrastination. Do not wait to the last minute. It is not true that um, doing things at the last minute or being under stress uh, causes you to do better. It does not, at least not to your mental health. That is not something that you can maintain. So at all costs, avoid procrastination. And I'm going to talk to you about how it is that I was able to maintain a 3.9 GPA through my bachelor's, through my master's, and with my doctorate, I graduated with a 4.0. So these are Denise Struthers' tips on how to get straight A's. Okay, wait, wait, I'm not done. Wait, hold on, let me finish, okay? Just give me five minutes and I'll be done. Okay, hold on. Okay, 
so you have just seen some of uh, my grades while I was working on my bachelor's, my master's, and my doctorate. And I just have two small tips on how you can get straight A's. And I guarantee you, if you do this, you will do very well each semester. Okay, the first tip is that regardless to how many classes you have and when or if you have assignments due, always study every day on that subject 15 minutes per day at least. So if you only have one class, then this will not be hard. Um, because you would just spend an extra 15, 30 minutes every day studying. You want to look at your syllabus for that class and see what's coming ahead so that you can then just spend an extra 15, 20 minutes on it, uh, even if you don't have anything due, regardless if you have anything due, just study or read or look over the material or just keep yourself focused on what it is that uh, needs to be accomplished or where the assignments are headed in that class. So that by the time you get to having to take a test or you have a paper that's due, um, a midterm or whatever, it doesn't catch you off guard. You are fully prepared and you're not cramming, you're not running around being all stressed out, trying to figure out, well, what does it do? Oh my God, you know, none of that. You are, you can relax and you can just do what you need to do in, in order to get that A out of that class. All right, so that's tip number one. Tip number two is that you surround yourself with a group of people that's in your class or that's taking the classes uh, that you're taking and you guys work together. One of the things that um, I did when I was working on my doctorate, there were five of us that were in that particular program. We worked together. We would discuss every assignment together. So if one person didn't understand or even what you, I thought I understood, having that discussion with them brought clarity. Maybe I didn't know how to approach that writing assignment, but having that discussion with them allowed me to be able to do so with uh, you know ease. And uh, we would have a group chat, we would uh, remind each other of when assignments were due. So just in case you do get a little busy because uh, life is not perfect uh, or something happened. And, and so having that to refer back to uh, can just really assist with, um, you know, everything that that needs to be taken care of and having those friends there. Also, just uh, the camaraderie, the courage and all of that to stick with it. Uh, we made sure that, you know, we didn't leave any man behind. Uh, if, if someone didn't turn in a seven, we were like, okay, this is what you need to do. You got to go back, you got to get this. You know, we work together, we encourage one another and we are still friends today. Um, and uh, such great relationships were formed during that time and when we graduated, we were able to celebrate one another and it was just totally awesome. So just those two tips really with everything else that I just said will help you to succeed. So thank you so much for uh, joining me. I hope that this has helped. And again, look at the comments section for over 40 and having to write academic papers. I guarantee you everything that you need to know um, about inserting table of contents from inserting a bibliography is being covered uh, in that tutorial. Again, thank you so much and much success to you.